Ano ang pagbabakuna? Ang pagbabakuna ay ang isang paglalapat o pag-inject sa ating katawan ng pinahinang uri ng virus o parte ng virus. Ito ay upang makabuo ang ating katawan ng sariling panlaban o tinatawag na immunity para sa uri ng sakit na ito. Bakit kailangan magpabakuna? Para sa kapakanan ng buong mundo, kailangan nating gamitin ang lahat ng ating magagamit upang matigil ang pandemya. Isa ang mga bakuna sa mga pinaka-epektibong gamit upang maprotektahan ang iyong kalusugan at mapigilan ang paglaganap ng COVID-19. Ano ang mga klase ng bakuna sa COVID-19? Karamihan sa mga bakunang ito ay kinakailangan dalawang turok, paisa-isa at may agwat. Inihahanda ng unang turok ang inyong katawan. Ang pangalawang turok ay ibinibigay sa hindi bababa sa tatlong linggo pagkatapos para masigurong mayroon kang buong proteksyon. Sino ang dapat magpapakuna? Yung may edad na 18 years old pataas. Maaring magpapakuna ang mga sumusunod na may pangkaraniwang sakit, ngunit kailangan ng supervisyon ng isang healthcare worker. Kung ikaw ay hindi sigurado sa iyong kondisyon, marapat na magpakonsulta ka muna sa iyong doktor. Ligtas ba ang bakuna sa COVID-19? Lahat ng mga COVID-19 na bakuna na ginagamit ngayon ay dumaan sa mga pagsusuring pangkaligtasan at naaabot ang mga pamantayan gaya ng ginawa sa anumang mga bakuna na nagawa sa mga nakalipas na panahon. Sino ang prioridad sa pagbakuna? Meron tayong tatlong kategorya. Ang Priority Eligible A, Priority Eligible B, at Priority Eligible C. Sa Priority Eligible A, ito ay ang mga frontline health workers, lahat ng senior citizen, mga mamamayan na may kaakibat na sakit, mga frontliner sa mga esensyal na sektor kasama ang uniformadong kagawad ng gobyerno, at ang A5 naman ay ang mahihirap na populasyon. Sa Priority Eligible B, ito naman ay ang mga teachers at social workers, mga ibang government workers, mga iba pang essential na manggagawa, mga iba't ibang grupo na may mataas na panganib sa kalusugan maliban sa mga senior citizen at mahirap na populasyon, mga overseas Filipino workers at mga nalalabing manggagawa. Sa Priority Eligible C, ito ay ang mga nalalabing populasyon na hindi kasama sa Priority A at B. Ano ang mga pangkariniwang epekto ng bakuna sa COVID? Gaya ng lahat ng mga gamot, ang bakuna ay maaaring magdulot ng mga side effect sa maliit na porsyento ng mga tao. Ito ay normal na pagtugon ng katawan na nagpapakita na gumagana ang bakuna. Ano itong mga ito? Pananakit sa bandang pinagturukan, sakit ng ulo, pagkapagod at pagkahapo, pananakit ng kalamnan at kasukasuan, lagnat o pagkahilo. Ayon sa datos ng Department of Health, 1.44% lang ng mga nabakunahan ang nagtala ng reaksyon sa bakuna at ang karamihan ay panayad lamang at hindi nagtatagal. Ano ang dapat gawin sa epekto ng bakuna sa COVID-19? Magpatong ng malamig na basang tela o ice pack sa bandang ininiksyonan ng sandali lamang. Huwag kuskusin o masahiin ang bandang ininiksyonan. Magpahinga at uminom ng maraming tubig. Maaring uminom ng paracetamol o ibuprofen at sundin ang mga tagubilin ng nag-iniksyon. Humingi ng payo mula sa inyong doktor kung lumala ang iyong mga simptomas. Ano naman ang sabi ng simbahan sa pagbabakuna? Noong Disyembre, 
a 2020, ang tanggapan ng doktrinal ng Vatican, ang Kongregasyon para sa Doktrina ng Pananampalataya, ay naglabas ng isang pahayag na binabanggit na katanggap-tanggap sa moral para sa mga Katoliko na kumuha ng mga bakuna laban sa COVID-19. Ang moralidad ng bakuna ay nakasalalay hindi lamang sa tungkulin na protektahan ang sariling kalusugan kung hindi pati na rin ang tungkulin na ituloy ang kabutihan. Salamat po. Please all kneel and together let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oratio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Saint Joseph, Saint Raphael the Archangel, San Roque, San Lorenzo Ruiz, San Pedro Calunsod. Prayer to Saint Joseph. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today is the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our presiding priest is Reverend Father Jobin Joseph of the Society of St. Paul.
in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and with your spirit brethren today's liturgy invites us to become a good shepherd for our family for our society as we come to celebrate this holy eucharist let us introspect and see those aspects of being a good shepherd how much is alive in me i confess to almighty god and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen lord have mercy lord have mercy christ have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy glory to god in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you. We give, we give you thanks, thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, heavenly King, King, O God, Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope faith and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will guard, gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them, so that they need no longer fear and tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved, Israel 
shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him. The Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two. Thus, establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity 
even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving and many came to know about it. They hastened their own food from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, last Sunday's Gospel told us that Jesus sent the disciples in pairs to preach repentance and heal the people. In today's Gospel, we see the disciples return and tell Jesus all they had done and taught. So, once disciples have told Jesus all they had done, he says to them, you must come away to a lonely place and rest for a while. You need to be away from your busy schedule and rest for a while. And here we see Jesus' great consideration for his apostles. Friends, it is important to take a break in life. It is important to take a break in life. To move away from monotony, to rest and to reflect. School going students, we see them taking a break during their studies, maybe weekend. Those at work, they also get a break. And in the book of Genesis, we are told God took break from his creative work and rested. So, it is not surprising, therefore, Jesus in today's gospel asking his disciples to rest for a while. When he tells them, be away from people and be with yourself, he is asking them to maintain a rhythm of life, a rhythm in their life, rhythm of rest and work. We cannot go on work until we have our rest. And we cannot take rest until we work hard. So when we have this attitude of maintaining proper rhythm in our life, there can be, in case we fail to maintain proper rhythm in our life, there can be two dangers. The first one, either we work more and more and earn money. Thus, fail to live our life. 
the second danger that can happen to some of us maybe we do not work well we do a very little work thus showing injustice to the given task so gospel remains us today as christians we need to follow or fall in a proper rhythm because rhythm a proper rhythm in our life is very important this rhythm must be also part of our christian living this rhythm must be part of our christian living just as no one can work without rest similarly no one can be effective in following jesus if we do not recharge ourselves from jesus when we fail to recharge ourselves from jesus we may not be able to follow jesus the way we supposed to follow the whole trouble begins when we have no time we focus more on doing and doing we don't listen to what god is trying to tell us we give god no opportunity to talk to us because because of our focus to do more and more we do not know how to be still we do not know how to be still and listen to lord how to be still and listen to the lord we miss the rhythm we miss the rhythm of working and resting with the lord working for our family and being with the lord for recharging ourselves and our family therefore in today's gospel jesus tells us very clearly let our work and action must go in hand by hand go in go hand in hand therefore the first point for us try to maintain a rhythm in our life and the second point that we can drive from draw from today's gospel is be compassionate be compassionate as jesus in today's gospel in the scripture we see jesus often surrounded by crowds we see there were instances because too many people came to them disciples and jesus they did not have even time to eat and those people refused to go away from jesus and followed him wherever he went and here we see when jesus saw this crowd coming to him gospel tells very clearly he moved with pity he felt compassion for them and in the book of exodus god tells moses at the burning bush i have indeed seen the cry of my people i heard their cry and i am concerned about their suffering nobody told god that israelites are suffering but he tells moses i heard the cry of my people same way in the book of genesis we see god tells cain the cry of your brother's blood comes to me from the ground the cry of abel's blood comes to my ear from the ground 
and again in the new testament jesus tells very clearly through the evangelist luke be compassionate just as my father is compassionate be compassionate just as my heavenly father is compassionate his compassion has no limit therefore we read in the gospel of matthew jesus tells he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous this same compassion moved jesus to heal the leper to give life to jairus rock daughter as we continue to celebrate this holy eucharist let us pray that we may be able to maintain a proper rhythm in our life a rhythm that is decided consulting with god working for us for our family at the same time giving proper time for our personal prayer trying to thus becoming a compassionate face of jesus here on earth and may god bless each one of us profession of faith we stand i believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible i believe in one lord jesus christ the only begotten son of god born of the father before all ages god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made consubstantial with the father Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. and i look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come amen let us pray to the heavenly father that we may become like jesus faithful sheep and loving shepherds to one another our response lord hear our prayer lord hear our prayer may the church remain a family of vigilant shepherds against false shepherds who lead people astray from God's fold let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer may all religious and civil leaders imitate the shepherdship of christ may they advocate the welfare of those put under their care by upholding primarily the dignity of the latter at all times let us pray to the lord Lord hear our prayer. May we your ship amidst the myriads of alluring voices in the world listen attentively to your voice through informed and well-founded discernment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. May those who have gone ahead of us enter the ever abundant pastures of your eternal paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. In silence, let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, the... hear our prayer. Eternal Father, listen to our humble pleas. Help us to become more and more like Jesus, the Good Shepherd and the faithful Lamb of God. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion very day offering of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we believe, we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery, and so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co in life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed home and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, our brothers and sisters. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. For those who will receive communion, you do not have to leave your seats. Please stand, and the priest and the Eucharistic ministers will approach you. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray graciously be present to your people we pray o lord and lead those you have imbued with the heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit bow down for the blessing may god bless you with every heavenly blessing make you always holy and pure in his sight pour out in abundance upon you the riches of his glory and teach you with the words of truth may he instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever enter you with fraternal charity through christ our lord amen and may the blessings of almighty god the father and the son and the holy spirit come upon you and remain with you forever amen go forth the mass is celebrated thanks be, thanks to, be god. to god